Hello everyone, in this video we will learn one important technique that is often being used to speed up the modeling process in console multiphysics. That is, we will learn how to use the measuring techniques. For example, we will learn how to find the coordinates of this point that is at the center of this circle, then we will learn how to find the radius, how to find the depth of this hole and how to find the age, the height of the cylinder. So more formally, if someone gives you this geometry, let's say you imported this geometry from a CAD file and you don't know the dimensions of the ge this geometry and you need to specify loads at particular positions right for example here or here or even here you want to find the coordinates or the characteristic dimensions of this geometry if you want to define a load over here you would need to know the height the displacement from let's say this is your work plane or the coordinate system is located xy plane is located over here so how to do that well you will need to measure the geometry and the whole point of this video is to teach you how to measure the geometry so this is the model geometry in console multiphasics however i'm going to teach you how to model such a geometry from scratch. So what we are going to do, we are going to open a new console window. We're going to click on Model Wizard 3D, Solid Mechanics, Study, we are going to use Time Dependent, although for this particular problem, it doesn't matter, you can choose any study. And here it is. So let us define our geometry. We click on geometry, we click on work plane, that's the first step. Okay? And then we click on plane geometry and we click on circle. We're going to use just the default parameters and we're going to click build select. If you want to change the radius, you can change the radius, right? And you can click here on zoom extent if you want to enlarge this view. Anyway, we are going to keep the default settings. So this is our circle. Then the next step is to extrude such a circle. So we click on geometry, we click on extrude, and let's select the distance of 0 0.5. Okay, here is our cylinder. The next step is to define the hole. So we click on geometry, we click on work plane, and here we're going to choose the face parallel. So we're going to choose the work plane that will be parallel to this edge or that will contain this, not the edge, this domain, the top domain of your uh, cylinder. And we're going to click to reverse the domain direction such that when we extrude, we are going to extrude inwards. Okay, and we click build and select. Here is our plane geometry. And let's define four circles click on circles let's choose the radius of 0 0.3 and we displace such a circle let's say 0 0.4 minus 0 0.4 and let's choose the radius 0 0.2 and click build select so here is our circle so far so good okay let us now define the four circles again we click on plane geometry we click on transforms and we click on array so now we're going to define an array of four circles we select our input objects um, size of the array two circles in the x two circles in the y directions and displacements let's keep the displacement let's like 0.4 let's see what happens we'll select aha uh -huh. we need a larger displacement let's go with 0.8 here it is okay this is an array we have the domain let's go back and let's extrude these domains you click on build all and the next step is to extrude we click on extrude automatically these four circles are selected however 
if for some reason your uh, console multiphysics doesn't select these circles you can always click here on work plane or faces we're going to click on faces and then we are going to uh, we can select individually circles that we want to extrude okay but anyway let's select the work plane okay and let's choose the distances of, let the distance be 0 0.3 and you click on build select Good. Now you have cylinders and you can see that you have cylinders by clicking on the wireframe rendering. Okay. The next step is to subtract <coughs> these small cylinders from the larger cylinders in order to define holes. So how to do that? We click on geometry. We click on booleans and partitions and we click on difference and in this section you click objects to add it's the external and objects to subtract are here and we click on build select okay here it is here is our geometry nicely defined okay let us now explain the main point of this video that is let us explain how to measure geometrical objects in console multiphysics well if you click on geometry if you do the right click here you have an option to measure so if you click on measure and if you expand the measure window you will see several options the first option is what kind of object you want to measure do you want to finalize geometry or you want a geometry objects let's click on a geometry objects okay and if you click here, you will obtain the basic statistics. You will obtain that you have one domain, how many faces, edges, points, CAD objects, and the bounding box. You will have the bounding box, which is very useful information. Then another thing that we can measure is the domain. So click on domain. So what do we have? We have the volume of domain, very important, surface area, bounding box very good how about the boundaries great we can measure the boundaries so if we click here boundaries we still get the area we have the bounding box very useful especially for defining fluxes how about edges aha uh -huh. we can even measure the edges so we click here very useful we obtained that the edge length is 0 0.5 meters and we can obtain other properties also for example what happens if you have this arc great we obtain the arc length very useful information how about the other other things we can measure we can also measure for example the whole length what happens if you select several domains we keep on I, I'm pressing shift button and then selecting several domains not several domains, several edges. Great, we get the total length, total length of this circle. Okay, let us erase this. How about points? How about points? Well, we can get the coordinates of certain points by just clicking on the option points. If we click here, we get the coordinates. Okay, so now we come to the main point of our video and that's how to get the coordinate of this point a how to get the coordinate of this point a okay so since we don't have the option to find directly this coordinate we have to use a few tricks so the trick that i find useful is that by selecting points and by basically taking these two points selecting these two points at the same time that are basically 180 degrees from each other on the opposite sides of the circle you obtain the distance between these points so the distance in the basically the absolute distance 0 0.4 so the radius is 0 0.2 that's very useful right and you see the, the x distance you see how it's how the coordinate system is oriented is 0 0.4 so 
you know that basically the radius is 0 0.2 so we answered actually immediately we answered the third point okay how about the coordinates of a well to obtain the coordinates of a you're going to simply select this point and you're just going to subtract from this point in the x direction 0 0.2 and you're going to obtain the center point of your geometry okay another another useful technique that you can also use to find directly the points a the point a you can select the point over here okay and you can see the average right console will give you the average coordinates which will be the center of your of your geometry okay this is a very useful technique uh, to obtain the radius we explain you can just select two points and the distance between these two points is 0 0.4 you divide this by 2 you get the radius okay and we need to uh, explain how to obtain the height and to obtain obtain the depth of these holes okay so how to do that simply you select edge you click on the edge this is the height of the cylinder right and let's find let's find the depth of this hole you erase this and you just select here and you obtain you will obtain the depth of this hole okay i hope that you learned something useful today this is a very useful technique that i find it extremely useful for my work and that's why i made this video to share with you this such that you can more easily define loads define certain boundary conditions, etc. Thank you very much for your attention.